What's up booktube? Welcome back. My name is Laura if you're new here and today I'm tier ranking every single new release that I read in 2021. Welcome to my kitchen. This is Hypothesis? The Pothos? Hypothosis? Get it? We're funny. <laughs> Anyways, hi. Uh, <laughs> this is a video that I did at the end of 2020 and I really enjoyed doing it. So I wanted to do it again this year. In 2020, my goal was to read mostly new releases. I wanted to focus on all the books that were coming out that year. Whereas last year, my goal was mostly to read my backlist. Um, so I have less new releases this year, but I still did read quite a few of them. I think there were 26, 27 on here. I don't remember, but either way, there's there's like a good a good chunk of books to uh, to go over for today. So let me switch you guys over to my screen here. So here is the tier ranking. So for this year, I changed up the um, the tiers from last year. So I have God tier as my top one. Really good good, just okay, forgettable, and yikes. Last year I didn't have forgettable, but for this year as I was going through my Goodreads to go and save all the book covers, there were several where I was like, I don't remember much about that one. So, so adding in forgettable seemed like it might come in handy for this time. So let's just get started. These are in no order at all. So the first one is The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas? Maybe? I forget his name actually. I also apologize in advance because I am terrible at author's names and I will probably forget a lot of them. Um, so The Taking of Jake Livingston, I read this one with Roxanne Can Read as part of a reading challenge that I still haven't posted the video for because I lost a bunch of the footage and I haven't gotten around to refilming it yet and that was months ago. Um, my bad. But um, this one wasn't my favorite. I didn't dislike it but I also really didn't like it that much either. For this one I think it's going to be a just okay. It's not quite forgettable. I do actually remember a lot of it, um, but it wasn't like great, you know? For me at least. I can see why others like it, it just is not what I wanted it to be. Uh, and it also had a lot of my phobias in there because that, that was really fun. That was heavy sarcasm, by the way. <laughs> Song for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers that is going straight to God tier. I think by the time that you're seeing this video, my top 10 books of the year is probably already out. So I'll link that somewhere if you want to go see it. But this was my number one book of the year. It was my favorite thing that I read and I just adored this book so much. I can't think of the title right now, but the newest book in the Cassidy Blake series by Victoria Schwab. What is it called? Is it City of Ghosts? Bridge of Souls? I think it's Bridge of Souls. That's the one. This one... Despite me forgetting the name, I actually really enjoyed this book. It's my favorite in the series so far. I thought it was so much fun. So this one I think I'll put under either good or really good. Mm, really good. The Tea Dragon Tapestry. Oh my god, I loved this book so much. That was going right to really good. This is just such a fun series. It's so cute. Is it God tier? It's God tier. It's a God tier series for me. I love this series. They're just so happy and I love them a lot. They're so wholesome. Act Your Age, Eve Brown. I enjoyed this one. It was good. It wasn't, it was probably my least favorite one in this series, but uh, either way it was still good. So I will put that in the good tier. I just feel like I didn't quite get the chemistry between the love interests as much as the other two books. So like while it was still a fantastic book, it just wasn't wasn't my personal fave, you know. Squad by Maggie Takuda Hall. This one was fun. I think that one's gonna go under the good tier. Solid read. Had a good time with it. This is a YA werewolf graphic novel and it's very gay as well. It's fantastic. <laughs> really fun. All the Tides of Fate by Adeline Grace. This is the sequel to um that one book. <laughs> just forgot the name of it. All the stars and teeth. There we go. I think this one is also going to be a good. I liked it. It's not my favorite series ever. I like, I enjoy the series, but it's very much a like three star series for me, um, which is good. It's not a bad thing. It's just not like phenomenal. Still a good time. I would still recommend it. It's just not going to be like an all time favorite that I'll think about for the rest of my life, but still had a very good time with it. Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood, I got as an arc from NetGalley and I devoured this book. This is going right to God tier. This one was also in my top 10 best books of the year. It was amazing. It was so good. It's a debut as well, which is even more impressive because like this was just, it was, it was amazing. If you like Crimson Peak, read this book, please. You will not regret it. Tales from the Hinterland by Melissa Albert. This is the companion like book of short stories, the like fairy tale book from the Hazelwood duology, the one that the grandmother in the book wrote. I loved this. It was so good. We all know this. I am obsessed with fairy tales. Uh, so I really enjoyed reading this book of fairy tale from this book and like kind of seeing how it played into the duology itself as well. So that was going to really good, excuse me, thank you. 
Nothing But Black and Teeth by Cassandra Ka, also one that I read with Roxanne for that reading challenge that I will eventually post once I get around to filming the rest of it. Um, <laughs> this one I'm really sad about because like I wanted to love it. I was so hyped for it. It was one of the books that I was looking forward to the most for this year and it really let me down, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't great. It was not forgettable. Okay. Like, it's it's less than just okay, but it's not yikes. It also wasn't forgettable. So I'm not really sure where to put it. I'm just gonna put it in just okay. Cause I wouldn't go so far as to say yikes, but it also wasn't good. <laughs> Across the Green Grass Fields by Shauna McGuire. This is book six in the Weaver Children series, which is my favorite series of all time. We know this. <laughs> um, this one though wasn't my favorite, unfortunately. Yeah, it wasn't like the best thing in the series. I did still enjoy it and like it was, it was, it was good. I just found that the the ending of it was really unsatisfying. I didn't really get what I wanted out of it, unfortunately. So that one is so like normally this series would be immediate god tier, but for this one I'm gonna put it under really good, uh, which is saying a lot considering that my like probably least favorite book in this series is still under a really good category. That just shows you how amazing this series is. <laughs> Defect by Nino Sipri. This is the sequel to Finna, which again, we all know I talk about this book frequently. I'm obsessed with this duology. This one is going into god tier. This is also one of my top 10 books of the year. It was just amazing. It was incredible. Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers, maybe? I forget the, the author's name. I'm very sorry. Um, this one was fine. It was okay. I don't know if it's forgettable or just okay. It's on, yeah, it's kind of forgettable to be honest. Um, it was good. I enjoyed it while I read it. Uh, I had some issues with it here and there, but like overall, it just didn't really stick with my brain. Like even while I was reading it, I was just like, mm, yeah, it'll be fine. I think I had originally given it like a three and a half, four stars. And then like a couple days later, I was like, nah, that's more like a three star. Like I had to lower my rating the farther away from it that I went. And now that so much time has passed, I really remember very little about it, to be honest. The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox, I think was the author's name. This one was good. I liked it. That was gonna go into the good tier. It was a fun little holiday romance with twins and like a strong family element. It was great. But you know, it was a holiday romance. So it's not gonna be like some profound, deep thing that I think about for the rest of my life. Life, but it was still a good time and I would definitely recommend it for a nice uh, holiday one. In Deeper Waters by F.T. Lukens. God tier. God tier. Love it. Also a top 10 book of the year. I am still very much obsessed with this one. I love any kind of like seaside fantasy story, especially if there are pirates involved and also it's queer. So like it's perfect for me, honestly. <laughs> one Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Also going into God tier. I loved this one. It was amazing. Oh, and I actually have a full video review for both of these books. One Last Stop and In, and, um, In Deeper Waters that I did, so I will link both of those down below for you guys if you want to hear my thoughts on them. But yeah, One Last Stop was incredible. It was also an arc that I got from that galley, and I loved it so much. It was so good. <laughs> Isn't It Romantic by Lisa K. Adam. It's the fourth book in the Romance Book Club series, and it is by far my favorite. It's the Russians book, and that character is just such a cinnamon roll. I love him so much. And that one's going into the really good category. I, I loved it. It was amazing. Payback's a Witch by Lana Harper. Um, I liked this one. I It was good. Is it forgettable? No, I think just good. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was decent. I'm having a hard time like fully remembering. So like maybe it should go into forgettable, but like the more that I think about it, I, I did actually really enjoy this one while I read it. Um, it's just not gonna like stick in my brain forever. <laughs> Continuum by Chet Man. Chet Man is a queer, deaf, Asian American, Jewish artist that I found on Instagram like years ago and I've been following him ever since. I just adore his art and this is his first book that he's published. So of course I had to read it right away. And that one is going to go into the really good category. I love learning more about his life and his, and his art and all that stuff. It was a really good one. Cheer Up, Love and Pom Poms by I think Crystal Frazier, I wanna say is the author. It's a graphic novel that that uh, features the like grumpy sunshine trope and also the first uh, transgender cheerleader on the cheer squad and it's just adorable. I love this one. It was also an arc that I got from Neck Alley and that one is going to go into the really good category. A Spindle Splintered by Alex E. Haro. I snuck this one in on like pretty much the last day of the year. So it was the last book that I read in 2021. I loved this one. I can definitely see how like other people might not like it so much, but in terms of like the tropes that are in here, it is so perfectly written for me. This is like right up my alley. It had so many things that I loved about it. It was phenomenal. It's not quite God tier, but I'm gonna put it into the 
really good category. Garlic and the Vampire, no clue who the author is, but this one was a really, really sweet graphic novel. I adored this one. It was adorable. Not much plot to it, but like it is, it is literally for children, so I can't really fault it for that. But that one's going into the really good category. Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. God tier. This is also, again, one of my favorite books of the year. This one I picked up on a whim and I'm so glad that I did. This is easily one of the best books that I've ever read probably in my entire life. It was just just so good. <laughs> well Matched by Jen DeLuca. This one was good. It's the third book in the Well Matched series, the so like adult contemporary romance that's set at a Ren fair in a small town. Um, they're fun. They're fine. They're like more than just okay, but not quite good either. I'll put it in good because I, because I definitely liked it better than Jake Livingston and Nothing But Black and Teeth. But yeah, it's kind of like in the middle of those two. So <laughs> Abbott 1973, I think is the title. It's a graphic novel. I got it. It's an arc. Um, forgettable, definitely. I have no clue what it was about. Uh, I didn't learn until after I was reading this book that it is um, not the first book in a series. Or like, it, or like it is, but like it's there was more to the series from before that you should have read first and I did not. So um, that was my bad. But yeah, I, this is very much a forgettable series for me. So and then finally Dipped in Holly by somebody whose name I also forget. I'm very sorry. <laughs> this one was a Kindle Unlimited holiday romance that I read. It was very steamy, very kinky, and a very good time. Um, but ultimately it was just, it was like literally just smut. There was no actual plot to it really. So that one, I, I really can't give it more than just good. Um, it was fun and I did definitely enjoy it. But um, yeah, I can't justify giving that one any more than good. <laughs> And yeah, so here is the final um, tier ranking of all the new releases that I read last year. I'm very happy to see that a lot of it were god tier. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six of my favorite books of the year were all new releases. So that's really good. This is a very good year for new releases for me, at least. Lots of good shit here. Good time. Thoroughly enjoyed these. <laughs> But that should do it for today's video then. Let me know which new releases that you read in 2021. If you've read any of these ones, let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear them. But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world and I will catch you in the next video. Bye.